Hello viewers, uh, I'm George from Ireland. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm uh, going to talk about something on the A-level history syllabus. If you're doing Rise of Fascism, this continues my previous videos about the March on Rome. Uh, today will be about the establishment of totalitarianism in fascist Italy. So the starting point uh, is 1922. Mussolini was appointed Prime Minister uh, in October that year. Uh, the fascist party was already in Parliament, but uh, not large enough to dominate it, not close to having a majority. Uh, the fascists were working within a parliamentary democracy framework, but they're very keen to uh, establish a totalitarian state. Mussolini is the one who coined the term totalitarian, as he was to say, everything inside the state, nothing outside the state. Uh, so some big business leaders, the wealthy, um, some of the establishment like aristocrats and army officers were glad that the fascists were in office because they felt the fascists were the only ones who could keep out the socialists. The Socialist Party in Italy, despite the name, was Marxist. Communist might be more accurate. Later on it did change its name to communist. And um, many uh, middle-of-the-road and right-wing people in Italy were very worried about a communist revolution. The first major step Mussolini took was in 1923 when he passed the Acerbo Law, which, is, uh, which said that um, the largest party at election would automatically get 65% of the seats in Parliament. And the following year, 1924, there was an election. The fascists cheated extensively with bogus voting, discounting votes for uh, other parties, particularly for the Socialist Party, uh, widespread intimidation and uh, more than a few socialists were killed. Uh, so the fascists did become the largest party and therefore got 65% of the seats. Now having said that, one mustn't overstate uh, their level of uh, electoral malpractice because the fascists did have some genuine popularity. It would be rash to try and put a figure on it. They might have been the largest party anyway. Um, I don't think anyone claims they would have got over 50% of the vote if the election had been run in a fair manner. Um, and uh, just following that election, the socialist leader Giacomo Mattiotti, he called for the um, election result to be annulled because there was so much flagrant cheating that the result was invalid. Uh, Mattiotti, he was then abducted by some fascists and murdered. Well, first of all, he simply disappeared. The public didn't know what happened to him, but his body was found in a shallow grave outside Rome. Uh, Mussolini apparently didn't authorise the killing of Mattiotti, but when he found out about it, Rather than denounce it or deny it, uh, his attitude was more or, less, more or less say, so what? He thought he'd brazen it out. So Mussolini's attitude was often to have brass neck. Uh, and this was a way of sending the message to any other opponents that even if someone as prominent as the leader of the Socialist Party can be murdered with impunity, well then nobody's safe. Um, and uh, nobody was charged in connection to that murder. Uh, so that was... That was the beginning of the end of um, Italian democracy. As I said in the previous video, democracy was not over, was not abolished at a stroke. It was a gradually got rid of. Um, something that happened in 1923 is the Tellini incident, which is abroad. Uh, General Tellini was an Italian who was going around um, Albania and Greece on behalf of um, the, the League of Nations trying to figure out where the um, border between Albania and Greece ought to lie. So um, his motorcade was ambushed by some Greek ultranationalists who shot dead Tellini and four of his Italian staff because they feared that Tellini would make uh, an award in favour of Albania, grant a bit of Greek territory to Albania. So um, Mussolini was nothing to do with this, but he exploited it to the max. And um, he immediately uh, bombarded uh, Greece and seized the Greek island of Corfu and said he w would not move until uh, Greece paid him so much compensation, 100 million lira, because an Italian general had been murdered. So the League of Nations um, in the assembly, they voted against the Italian action. Of course, Italy had been wronged, but Mussolini's action had been grossly uh, excessive in relation to the provocation. How many people had he killed with this bombardment? It was a lot more than five. And seizing uh, Greek territory was nothing to do with it. Um, 
There was the Count of the League of Nations, which were the four dominant nations. It's the equivalent of the UN Security Council today. The countries on it were the United Kingdom, France, Italy and Japan, all winners from the First World War on the Allied side. But because um, Italy was a permanent member of the Council, um, no proper action could be taken against Italy uh, because Italy would just veto it. Then, <coughs> um, excuse me, um, so uh, Mussolini just refused to budge and the League of Nations again caved in. Votes of the Assembly were solely advisory. They didn't have any teeth. There was nothing they could do against Italy because Italy was in, on the Council of the League of Nations. Anyway, Italy got paid the compensation and then withdrew um, Mussolini also succeeded in cementing uh, her relationship with Albania. Albania was more or less a client state. Um, eventually, Italy was going to simply annex it. Um, so um, Mussolini, as a former journalist, he understood the power of the press. The yellow press became increasingly fascist, which is to say the, the popular press, which had short articles and simple vocabulary, plenty of photos, aimed at people with a lower reading age. Eventually, he was able to uh, suborn some of the more highbrow uh, newspapers in Italy, insisting on things like the name Mussolini could all, always have to be printed in block capitals. Mussolini was never to be uh, photographed smoking, dancing, or in the presence of priests, all things he felt would demean him. Uh, he attempted rapprochement with the Catholic Church. I think that's just beyond the scope of this video. Um, so he was uh, establishing more fascist organizations, youth organizations, like Balia, a bit like Boy Scouts. Um, children of the She-Wolf was another one for uh, little children. Balila was because there was a, an Italian child um, in the early 19th century who'd been throwing stones at, at, at Austrian soldiers in Italy and been shot dead, and this had sparked a revolt. Children of the She-Wolf is, of course, a reference to Romulus and Remus, the mythical founders of Rome in the 8th century um, BC. Uh, the fascists were often looking back to ancient Rome, which they felt had been the most splendid chapter of Italy's history when Italy had dominated much of Europe, North Africa, the Near East. Um, right, so the next thing was 1926. Uh, Mussolini had a law passed making him responsible to the king, not to the people, not to parliament. There was another organization founded as an alternative parliament, the Grand Council of Fascism. Only fascists were in that. They were handpicked by Mussolini as his own yes men. Parliament became less and less important. In 1928, all uh, political parties besides the fascists were banned. Some of the centrist and right wing parties had been satisfied with this. Many of members of those parties had joined the fascists. To some extent, they believed in it, partly out of careerism. And so there were still elections, but the Grand Council of Fascism would nominate a list of candidates. People could vote yes or no. They almost always voted yes. So there were no more competitive elections. Freedom of expression had been taken away. Many communists, socialists, other dissidents went abroad. Mussolini had founded his own secret police, OVRA. The English translation of the name is the Organization for Vigilance Against Anti-Fascist Resistance. So particularly, particularly communist activists abroad were tracked down and killed by, um, by Ovra. The uh, Italian communists, they often went to France, as it's nearby, the language is similar, they had fraternal links with the communist party there. Um, now, w what else was going on at this stage? Likewise on the radio, constant propaganda extolling the virtues of fascism. There was a uh, propaganda in terms of architecture, statements in stone, if you look at uh, Milan Central Railway Station, you'll see what I'm talking about. A neoclassical style, meant to be very masculine. Numbering years since 1922, the year of fascism. That was year one of fascism. It was a new era. Mussolini was saying the 19th century was a century of democracy. The 20th century, this is the century of fascism. And he really believed his ideology would triumph, not just in Italy, but in many other European countries. And the late 20s and early 30s, it looked like um, he could be right. So um, he did some things which, which were popular, like setting up Dopo Lavoro after work, a social club for people to enjoy themselves, organizing outings and so on. So uh, anyway, by 1928, he'd certainly fully established a totalitarian state, looked to be rock solid. It seemed as though they would stay indefinitely. 
were it not for the defeat in the Second World War, that might well have been right. Anyway, in the upcoming video, we'll look at uh, the fascist consolidation of power from the late 20s into the 30s.